Love is a curious thing. Some might consider it to be the most ridiculous sentiment of them all. Oh, what people will do for the sake of love. Some young people may have the courage to die to keep from being apart and are thus alone. Do you see it? Therein lies the problem, hoping that death will unite them. They have eternally separated themselves from the very thing they died for in life. Does love continue on after death? Is it a possession so valuable that experiencing love in order to accomplish death for the sake of that love is preferable to having never experienced it at all? <laughs> but what would I know? I'm only a player. And I have no more place in this narrative once my time in this has run its course. Though for one night, I may fly away to Elysium and to another find myself at the end of a hangman's noose. You know perfectly well that I have merely retired to my bed, simply to rise a new man when comes the morning, simply to die and to die again. I've never put stock in love. As you know, I deal with truth. Truth disguised as the very thing you see before you. In the end, love cannot conquer a bitter truth. But who is to say that to our young Lord Petrus and his new bride Kate? Could love be their undoing? Can love conquer a world that hates it and dispenses upon it an ironclad I don't know. Like I said, I'm only a player. Thank <laughs> you. 
What do we do about him? Let him go? Let him be a living proof for Lord Gonzalez's preaching. Take him to the gallows immediately. Oh man, God have mercy on his soul. We have all heard it said, do not stand up against an evil person, for if he slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other as well. Now, what sort of insanity could compel our Lord to say such a thing? Does he care not for the oppressed, or me to merely sit in silence and endure the slings and arrows of any and all who would do us harm? The meaning of such a phrase lies in the ancient way of life. For in those days, whenever a Roman slapped a Jew, he did it with the back of his hand. For that was a sign of contempt, a sign of inequality. It was a practice reserved only for Jews, non-citizens, and subhumans. And yet, if you were to turn the other cheek, you had to be slapped with the front of the hand. And that was a sign of respect, a sign of equality, of citizenship. Do you see it? In their own weakness, the Lord lifts up the oppressed to the level of their oppressors and declares, Thou wilt not call me clean that which I have made clean. Woe to the one would test the patience of our Lord by mistreating his children. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. A Lord giveth, and a Lord taketh away. Pascal. <laughs> Dearest Pascal. He's gone, Kate. I remember the first day I ever met Pascal. There I lay, shivering long. told me I had a mind for the same thing, that I had every right as any other man. And now he's gone. He wasn't in any pain. The Lord took him home. Do you remember the night when he died? How he sang, danced for all of us. How he told the stories of Aristophanes and the Greek poets. How Bid the children good night. He promised to finish the story of the book of Exodus. But he never woke up. His rest was an eternal sleep. He was proud of you, Petrus. Imagine him watching over you with the angels above, and you are showing your findings to the people. If the people even understand what I'm saying. They do, Petrus. You're not perfect, but no one expects you to be. You're kind, and will for kindness is few and far between. God will see one day. We'll make that world one where our children can be free. How? By faith.
day go by where I did not wake up and praise your name. When I looked to the heavens, did I not see your magnificence? What would you have me do, Father? I gave you my freedom, and I bowed my head and did not stifle the light from my eyes, even though the dagger lay there on the bedside table. Was I to be your Hagar? and return to the hell of a slave's life. I gave you my chastity by becoming an unhappy mother to your unfortunate lambs. Was I to be your Abraham and bind my son like Isaac to the mountain in sacrifice for my impurities? What more can I give that you haven't taken away, Father God? Yet you sent Hagar an angel to quench her thirst for the living water. Am I no more faithful than she? Excellency. My lady. Oh, exalted Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Had enough of this court. I should have been a jester. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you come? I wish to make a request. Of you. I wish to ensure you deny that request. Yes, my queen. <laughs> Big Farnes, please. Thank you, your majesty. As you well know, I have a certain fascination for the family Gonzalez. I just acquired a portrait of them the other day. A little girl in particular, Antoinetta, is quite charming. If I would your majesty's permission, I wish to acquire her. You wish a portrait of only the daughter? Yes, I suppose I can ask for that as well. But in truth, it is one thing, a symbol of status, one might say, to put a portrait of the family Gonzalez. But imagine, if I had custody of the girl herself, then your fame and your endeavors would be glorified throughout Italy and France. Imagine it. Catherine Medici, the most influential woman in Europe. And what would you do with the child? Continue the experiment, of course. I take the girl, educate her to be a lady in my own court, and then show her off for the world to see. Perhaps I could marry her off to a member of my own household and read more of the pups. Please, my queen, pay him no heed. Lord Gonzalez has been nothing but loyal to your every decision. Perhaps. And if Lord Gonzalez disagrees? <sighs> Madame, are you really so blind as to what you have created in Lord Gonzalez? He spends his days in the marketplace, preaching his little treatise to whoever will speak to him. And do you know what he talks about? Himself, I suppose. No. He denounces the crown and the established monarchy. All holy scriptures dictate that the people must submit and be subservient to you, for the Lord has placed you over them for their own betterment. And here is this. 
animal, speaking day after day, blaspheming the words of our Lord. He says that the royalty are no higher than peasants in the sight of our Lord, that they should not be satisfied with their lot in life, but make demands of the crown as if they were the ruler and you were the peasant. They would throw the generals into prison and raise the basis of prostitutes to the throne. Are you satisfied with the way Lord Gonzalo speaks of you? And how is this any way to thank you, the one who devoted her life to his education, his marriage, and his family? I see. Now what would you have me do in this case, Lord Farnes? It is like raising a hunting dog, you see. When a dog has no boundaries or consequences, they feel no qualms at all about biting until they have their way in everything. But that is why a wise trainer of dogs carries a stick, so that when a pup falls out of line, a sharp beating can cause it to fall back into line. Lord Gonzalez is the pup here, speaking without any boundaries or consequences. But if you were to take one of these <clears throat> Please, my queen, don't Silence! listen! Silence! I'm the queen of France, and my decisions are my own! Yes, my queen. Lord Farnes, please. Thank you, your majesty. But if you were to take his puppies, then Lord Gonzalez would finally realize that, after all, you hold this stick, not him. You wouldn't have to let him throw your sons and daughters into prison. You can take his. You brought him out of that cage. You can throw him back into it if you so desire. You are in control. I am in control. I am the mistress of his fate, and if Lord Gonzalez does not pay homage to me, then I must show him what happens when a pet misbehaves. Please, my queen, don't do this! Remove this man from my court. He is no longer welcome. And summon Lord Gonzalez. I'd like to speak with him immediately and alone. <coughs> Tell him to bring his treatise. <laughs> Lord Farnes, you may collect his daughter while I have him here, but let me deliver the news. It is only necessary that as his queen, I administer discipline. As you wish, Your Majesty. How could that wretched beast make demands of me? Did I not care for him like a mother? Did I not save him from the whip of the circus master? And this is how he repays me? With delusions of grandeur and treasonous speech? No, Petrus. Your life belongs to me. And if you don't pay fealty to me, then I will whip you like the dog you are. And if you refuse, Oh, how I will chest at your misfortunes. Oh, how I will chest. My queen, you summoned me. Lord Gonzalez, we have much to discuss. I am concerned. Concerned, your majesty. Concerned about the fruition of my experiment. I've heard stories, very nasty stories, that you care not for our kingdom or as your duty as accountant. They say that you pick fights with the town watchmen, that you preach from the local peasantry, saying that there's no need for kings or queens, that our whole feudal system is unnecessary. They say that this comes from a treatise. Do you deny it? I have written a treatise. Pascal instructed me to. I hoped it might win me my freedom, Your Majesty. Your freedom? To walk unashamedly down a town road without the scrutiny of my appearance. If I was to prove myself equal to your grace, surely others would understand. And would you be as so bold as to share this with me? With a good will, my queen. In these pages, I hope to prove to your grace that I am as much of a man as Pascal was, as much of a man as the Lord Alexander and Lord Farnes are, even as much of a man as the beggar you turn away from your door day after day. What do you have to say? It's quite simple. If the peasantry resonate with my speech, as my accusers claim, it is only because of their invisibleness. This feudal system we live under only serves to deprive the children of God their inheritance. You would claim we are all equals, royals and beggars alike. Yes. For here, I will make an argument thought not of before. This feudal system only serves to separate the Jew from the Gentile, the slave from the free, the man 
from the woman. Yet I say, under God above, they do not exist. Indeed. How could they hope to exist, my queen? When the world knew not Christ, we were indeed slaves, slaves to a bureaucracy, to a legalism of sin, where no evil thing we did went unpunished. And thus, we heaped sacrifice upon sacrifice. We spilt the blood of countless women, children, and men to sate the appetite of what we believed was an angry God. And yet, for all the blood we spilt, did we once wash ourselves clean of our trespass? Did we once justify ourselves? No. We merely dulled the pain for a moment, yet in the long run added to the pile, and the end result is a world worse off than it is before. Sometimes blood must be spilt for justice. Justice, my queen. You think it is just for a man to be torn from his family when he cannot pay his debts? You think it is just for an entire village of innocent men, women, and children to be slaughtered when a single father sins? Whenever you start these wars to discipline your dissident peasants whenever they rise against you, it doesn't matter how right you feel. You don't know who's going to die, or who would one day rise up against you and overturn your sense of justice. So what are we to do? Surrender to our abusers? Sell our own children into slavery? Are we not to fight back? Fight back? Did Christ fight back when he was slain for our trespass? And yet, because of his sacrifice, he has washed clean all of the blood that once bound us in chains. And because of this love, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither man nor woman. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Do you dare to challenge me? You would bring down earthly power with love. Yes! And entire kingdoms more than that. Do you need proof of the love of God? Think of Hagar. There she lay, raped and abused for the pleasure of her masters, forced and sent away. Yet she did not die, for the Lord saw her pain, and did not turn away his child from receiving that love. And for that, Hagar's son was Ishmael, for the Lord saw her in her misery, and did not deny his child that love. And that is you and me. We are both slaves to our sin, yet set free by the blood of Christ. We are not equals! How dare you, beast! Did I not give you everything that you needed? Did I not care for you? And this is how you repay me! trusted you, Petrus, and you have failed me. And for that, I had to punish you. Punish? You are a failed experiment, Petrus, but not all is in vain. You did procreate children, and they are much younger than you were when I found you, and more pliable. And it was an easy decision since Pascal passed away. What have you done? I've given your daughter over to Duke Farnes and your son to the Russian Empress. They'll be more grateful than you ever were to me. What? I just needed you out of the way, Petrus. Why do you think I summoned you here? I couldn't let the guards get in the way. You've done that enough. No! Get her here, please! I beg you. If I deserve to be banished, then banish me. Throw me in a cage! Parade me around the world as the man of the woods again! Skin me! Hang my belt upon the wall! Throw me in a dungeon! Kill me if you must! Do whatever you want with me, but please! Spare my children. No. Sometimes death is not a punishment for one such as this. How should you learn if you are dead? 
Now get out of my sight! I don't want to see you again before you are summoned, or I will throw you in the dungeon! to myself that first night. Kate, you have lived your life in a cage. A cage where not even your own husband could protect you. It's like I told you before, Petrus. I stepped into that cage willingly. But you blame me for this? No. I blame myself. I blame myself for ever trusting the DJI. I thought
which is fate rests within the hand of God now. Your place is no longer in France. It is time to leave it behind. Goodbye. Throughout my journeys through the palatial splendor of France, I encountered there the vilest of beings, philosophers and nobility. How could a man be so foolish to think that he lives unseen by God? Bureaucrats and boss. God will still judge him for that unresolved truth. Please, somebody help me! And yet I bring to you here tonight my crowning. I give unto you the Jezebel of all humanity, the Queen of France. Oh, God Almighty, deliver me! They were the ones turned away at the gates of heaven and told I never knew you. Look at her shame, at her hatred of the Lord. Let your soul on her uncompassionate heart. He have prophesied to her own demons, and yet they are the ones to be pitied. For if they speak, trust dies at the hand of forbidden truth. I'm sorry. Hear the beast. Bravo, Lord Gonzalez. You're so brave to challenge a monster such as this. I gave you back your life. I gave you family. Pay her growls no mind. Tis a trick to lure you into letting her out. You gave me a family. So you could tear them from me. Who gave you the right to play God of my life? For when the truth is discovered, all is undone. How can I not drag tears at your happiness, Petrus? <laughs> my husband wasn't even with me my wedding night, and your wife stayed with you in imprisonment. You were broken and found a way to live. My children were taken from me by the Lord. Did I have no right to yours? Oh, God, what have I done? Luckily, I've mastered the proper way to best such an animal. Be still! When the dishonest man reveals his lies, then beast turns to beauty, and beauty turns to beast. Beauty turns to beast! I was not your God! Beauty turns to beast! I was the beast! Beauty turns to beast.
feel pain, to strive your whole life for something and still not overcome. But what did the Lord say of pain? He who opened the eyes of the blind, who made the lame walk and raised the dead. He spoke of a day of glorious resurrection and on that day, he would wipe every tear from their eye, and there wouldn't be any mourning, or crying, or pain, nor death anymore. For the old will have passed away. Behold, the new has come. On this wretched earth, I will never see my children again, and I weep for them. I will never see dear Pascal again, and I weep for him. I will never see my dearest, dear Catherine again. And I weep for her. And yet I fix my eyes on the glorious return of Christ. For on that day, I will stand with Dia. I will stand with Pascal. I will stand with my children, with my wife. And we will all praise the Lord on high. For the greatest of these is found from among the least, and the father above sees his child.